wonderful. My name is Mario Denton, and we just carry on with this powerful program about your mandate, about your journey. And why is it so important? Because if the, your mandate and your journey is not clear, I know what's going to happen. Now, today we're going to talk about a very a issue that's a topical issue. And let me start with this. It's about God's economy versus man's economy. Now, I was lecturing on this topic in a great business school in Germany where I decided I'm going to stir. And I said to them, listen, let's talk about the two economies of the world. And immediately when you start with this, people ask you, explain to me, because according to them, there's only one economy. And I'm saying, no, there are two economies. And they said, please explain it to me. And then I said, now let me give you some guidance. Let me explain it to you. Let me explain to you what you need to do to know. Because in the business world, we talk about purpose. We talk about ownership. We talk about finances. But where is it coming from? Do we really understand this? And in my research and for preparation of this session, you know, I just look at a couple of things that's currently available and what are the current issues. And one of the first things that I realize that people don't always understand, you know, the reality of God, God in the workplace. So, you know, are we owners? Yes or no? And, and I want to use a good example. I was on radio and somebody interviewed me and he asked a very simple question. And it's all about retrenchment and downsizing. Uh, how do we do it? And is there a best way of doing it? And my immediate reply was, yeah, there are various ways to do it, but I'm going to give you two simple ways to do it. And the guy said, so what do you mean? He thought there was only one way, downsize, right size, retrains, and then you move on. And I'm saying, you know, it depends who's the owner of the business. Because if you are the owner of the business, you can do it the man's economy way. Do it and do it fast and do it quick. But if God is the owner of the business and you are just a steward, the process is going to look differently. <laughs> and that's why I said to me, you know, what is in your heart? So today we're going to start with this. What's happening in the world? What do we see? There's a lot of wrong teachings about this topic. Uh, there's a lot of people saying, Mario, just claim it. It's yours, you know, but we're going to go into this series and discuss these type of things. But just before we move on, um, a lot of people ask me, Mario, where, where is your, your, I want to say, knowledge and wisdom coming from? And it's simple. I've got a brilliant leadership Bible, uh, which is very close to my heart. And in this leadership Bible, you know, they've put it together like the, you know, commitment, humility, integrity, obedience, priority, purpose, wisdom, values, uh, justice, leadership development. This is a real serious leadership Bible. And if you study it, you will see where's the wisdom going to come from, where I'm going to share with you today. I'm thinking of another example. You know, you've got sometimes when you lecture on this topic, you've got some great students and people with lots of, you know, knowledge and insight. And uh, one student approached me and he said, listen, I know what's wrong in the business world today. And I said, fine, tell me. He said, I'm going to do my research on this topic of world and man's economy and God's economy. And I said to him, well, that's fine, but uh, talk to me about your references. And I said, no, listen, please, just come to my office. And in my office, there was a stack of these leadership Bibles. I said to him, listen, now do me a favor. This is something that's going to be the basis of your research. Go and do your assignment. Use these principles. But now the second part of the story, about 10 years later, he phoned me again one day and he said, uh, I need to talk to you. And I suddenly realized that who's on the other side? And he said, do you still recognize me? And I said, just remind me and refresh my memory. He said, no, I was looking for an assignment. And when I approached you, you said to me, listen, you must use the reference material. You must use the right material. And I said, today, 10 years later, I'm also lecturing. I'm using the principles and um, I'm also now looking for more advice. So this is why I'm saying, you know, in which economy are you? Because we're living in a world and listen to this. This was a statement from Os Hillman. Service revealed that up to 90 percent of church members believe they are not being taught how to apply the Bible in this complex world of work where they spend 60 to 70 percent of the time. 
So what I'm saying to you, we are in a serious predicament here because you are sitting in the world, you want to apply God's economy, but you've not been trained how to deal with this. Um, so the question is, what can we do? How can we close the gap? So I'm going to give you and share with you some brilliant information about this topic. Um, they call it the eight till five window. And this was really serious concern to me that they're saying about six to 12 percent of people are attending church services. Now, put yourself in that position. What about the rest? What about when you're going back to the workplace? How can you apply this information? Uh, and then the second part of this research is saying, but people are not equipped. And I'm thinking of one example where a business person approached me in the Sunday and said, Mario, I'm dealing with conflict in the workplace. What is God's word telling us about this? Where do we start? And in my session today, you know, I'm going to share with you a couple of things. And please, to, this program is not about showing books and all these type of things. I want you to implement this. But one of the first things that I want to mention, if you want to serious about God's economy, I love the research of Howard Dayton. I know him personally. But in his book about business God's way, we've done a develop, we develop a questionnaire. And it's all about asking fundamental questions like, where did he go to business school? That's a great question. Um, what do we mean by business by the book? Things like vision, mission, values. Things like my business is my pulpit. Now, we need to understand these type of things because we're going to go deeper. Um, God's part and our part. I want to use another brilliant example. And this is why in this world today, people don't understand this. People's going to challenge you. People's going to sometimes even don't pay you on time and, and all these type of things. Now, you're going to make up your mind. Are you in God's economy or man's economy? Because when you discuss it, you're going to see there's only one leader. What about spiritual disciplines? What about honesty? How do I empower others? What about the role of human resources? Oh, that's, that's a big issue. What about giving? What about crisis? What about eternity? What about finishing well? So I want to challenge you, please. And I want you, again, I want to repeat myself here. I love this topic and I love talking about this, but I'm not a type of person who's going to say, Mario, you know, are you available? Can you share this stuff? Because what we've done already with the other sessions, we put the material together, we put the slides together because we want to change the world. We want need facilitators like you. But this is a topic that I know, you know, maybe you are interested in so saying, Mario, let's organize a conference. I'm saying, take me on. God willing, let's pray about it because I want to talk. I want to help you. We're sitting in a world that's a, such a big issue. What, what is the situation? It's about statements like, is it our company or is it his company? Now, listen to me. I'm asking you the question. You're working for an organization, maybe a big bank. But it's all about it's my company, it's my company, it's my company. But if you're in God's economy, it's His company. So when you start in the morning, first of all, one of the first things, instead of asking what is on your agenda, what, is, what are the to-do lists, you've got to ask yourself, what is on His agenda? What, because it's His company. The second one, it's, it's all about performance, 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 performance. And I've been in the corporate world. I know this. It's about 10%, the next year, 10%, and next. It's about performance, performance, performance. And you, if you don't perform, they get rid of you. It's like dead wood. They don't like you. They, f they work you out. It is about performance, performance, performance. And this is why you often see it. And, and, and I want to use a good example. One of my MBA students about 10 years ago approached me in this week. And he said, Mario, I've resigned. A CEO earning big comp money. And he said, can I just, and I watch you, I've worked for the first four sessions, and I need to talk to you. And I suddenly realized living in a world, it's about bottom line, bottom line, bottom line. But if you work in God's economy, it's a servant's heart. Isn't it wonderful? So we need to understand these principles. And I know, you know, when you work in the world today, people say, no, Mario, this is tough. This is, but I'm saying, I love this. 
and I want you to be a facilitator. I'm going to show you in the next part of the session, I'm going to demonstrate for you how to implement these principles. So what is it all about? We're talking about God's economy and man's economy. And I want to know, are you on the left or are you on the right? And then very important, what can we do about this? I want solutions. I want you to take action. I want you to implement this. I want you to share this information. So I'm looking forward to the session. I'm going to repeat a couple of things again. So let's take a short break. I will be back because I'm excited about this very important topic. See you again. Do we understand these different seasons? We try our best to help people to be successful. As people move on with their lives, there is a desperate need to move on to the season of significance. In our research on managerial degeneration and self-neglect, we have found that managers easily understand the importance of strategic thinking and when to have team building sessions with their staff, but often fail to apply those same processes in their own lives. Use your willingness and obedience now. Start your journey to be a facilitator today. When trained as a facilitator, you will have the opportunity to serve people in a very unique way. We are keen to take you through this wonderful training. Let the rest of your life be the best part of your life. So let's carry on discussing this topic about God's economy and man's economy. And I, from my side, yes, I'm so excited about this topic. So let me explain to you some of the other principles of God's economy and man's economy. In, in man's economy, is how much can I make? You can hear the sound of my, the way that I explain it. It's about you. It's about how much can I make? But in God's economy, how much can I give? And that's interesting. So there's a big opposite. It's about, it's so selfies. And I want to repeat this. In God's economy, there's no competition. If your brother is sitting and doing something and you're doing something similar, there's no competition. But in man's economy, you know, it's survival of the fittest. And that's wrong. It's a great idea. But what about the rest of the people working with you? Okay, so that's another very important principle. In man's economy, it's about personal success. It's about me. It's about me is what I want. But in God's economy, it's all about helping others to achieve. And I want to repeat this. If you're listening to me and you said, Mario, I want to get involved. I want to make a difference. Uh, I, I cannot keep this for myself. You know, I've received some great news recently about somebody sitting in Swaziland, somebody sitting in Nigeria asking me, listen, I want to be part of this ministry. I want to be part of God's TV. I'm saying, well, come on. I'm looking forward for you. Please, because my job, I want to apply God's economy principles. And economy of God is saying about helping others to achieve. So write to me and note, tell me what do you need. So if you need the slides, yes, you've got it. If you need the notes, yes, you've got it. If you need to relook at this presentation, we've busy downloaded every time on, on the YouTube, you can have it. So use this information. The next thing is about God's economy, pleasing men. Now, why do you want to please this brother always and this person that's above you? I know. Simple reason is if you don't look after him, if you don't support him in, the, in that sense is that, you know, he's sitting in a position he can get good rid of you. It's about pleasing men. But on the other side, if you're in God's economy, it's pleasing God. What is God asking us to do? You see the difference? So we are in trouble. I know it. Because we're on towards the left, the man's economy of the world, not in God's economy. The other thing about man's economy, living in daily fear, what if? So let me ask you the question. What if they retrench you today? If you must apply for your job, if you don't get it today, there's fear. What's going to happen after 60 and 65? What if I retire and I don't have enough money? But that's God's economy. And by the way, retirement, where is it coming from? Is it biblical? Yes or no? Well, if you think it's biblical, bring me the evidence because it's not biblical. You see, we need to rephrase these type of things because in man's economy, you live with fear, but in God's economy, there's hope. There is hope. There's no doubt about it. Even if you're feeling, Mario, it's tough time this month, but how do we fix it? How do we move on? So why am I so excited? 
I love talking about this topic, and it's about man's economy, God's economy, and I, we've got some brilliant material, things that I've learned from Howard Dayton, things like Business God's Way. And please, you know, I don't want to keep this only for myself. I want you to get involved. I want you to be a trainer. I want you to be a small group. And there's three ways of getting involved. You can start with a small group in your area. And I love small groups because the biggest training is happening in small groups. Uh, you know, we're sitting sometimes in a church and please, there's nothing wrong, but it's maybe you are one of 500 or 200. You are hiding. You're not actively, you're not involved. But you're sitting in a small group. You discuss, you reflect. You've got as an accountability partner. That's going to make a big difference. So that's the one way. The other way, you can train people in webinars. Or you can, the latest thing is e-books and e-material. This is available. And then also what I'm calling about e-learning. So let's apply these type of things. So what are we saying? In God's economy and man's economy, in man's economy, it's about short term, you know, for the next year, for the next two years. But in God's economy, it's about leaving a legacy behind you. It's a lasting legacy. It's not only about you. And this is why I look at family business. Is it possible to take it over from the one level to the next to the next? And I'm saying, yes. What is the legacy that you want to leave behind? It's not about short-term gain. Um, what else? In man's economy, there's so much uncertainty. What's happening? We listen to the world and the news, and we suddenly realize, oh, things is not going to work out. But in God's economy, you trust God. He's the owner of the business. And in the next session, we're going to talk about things like ownership. We're going to talk about the purpose of business. Where is it coming from? But please, this is so powerful because is it trusting God? Yes or no? And you will see it. And I want to be the first one. I know in my days of lecturing at the MBA students, it was more towards the left until I realized, until, you know, you know these issues just open up for me. But I still got a couple of principles. In man's economy, it's all about profit and profit and profit. That's the principle. Is there something else in God's economy? No, we're looking at some fundamental principles. And in one of the sessions, I'm going to talk to you about sound governance. Where is it? Where, why, why do we bring in these principles? So very, very important. In man's economy, is, and listen to this, whatever it takes. So even if you need to bribe a person, if you need to get that business, you do it. And if you do it even the wrong way, from man's economy, it's acceptable. But in God's economy, you've got to look at the motives. You've got to look at the purpose. And then you suddenly realize there's no ways that we can carry on like that. And that to me is very important. In man's economy, there's a lot of stress. There's a crisis. How do we cope? What do we do? And I'm not saying you're not going to have a stress maybe in God's economy. Yes, there's going to be there. But... I want to use the next word, this contentment. I'm happy with what I have. I can take what's in my hands and I can make a difference. This is what Jesus said to us. Take what is in your hand and make the difference. There's contentment. It's not about more and more and more and more and more. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't understand even contentment. And then the next principle is all about lots of anxiety in man's economy. And then on the other side, there's this thing of what we call patience. Oh, wonderful. Now, I've just touched on this topic of man's economy versus God's economy. But listen to the next statements. And, um, and, and, and in my research, in my putting the notes together for, for session, I, I look at, you know, the ideal workplace. Now, imagine the following. People meet Jesus Christ as Savior and lives, lives are changed in the workplace. Is it possible? Yes. God is loved and His kingdom principles respected in the workplace. Yes. There's a servant leadership style that's governing our relationships. Is it possible? Yes. Selfish ambition is non-existent because I know where this is coming from. Uh, people respect and help each other. It's not about selfishness. Um, decisions are made prayerfully. A lot of time we said this is A and B and C, but what about prayer? Uh, the things that we do is biblical based. It's defined on specific values. Isn't this wonderful? What else? Ethics and integrity are the real issues. We're standing for that. There's a, there's a, in God's economy, there's this, this, this area of excellence is vital. There's collaboration. There's accountability. You know what I want from you. God's power and these extraordinary miracles are seen. 
and, and there's this, a place where people are saying, you know, I love working, I love to go to the work so that we can make that difference. And I want to repeat, where is this coming from? I'm saying it's simple, Mario. It's about the leadership Bible, leadership principles from God's word. Please, this is not about me. This is nothing about me. This is about coming out of this Bible, brilliant principle about wisdom, about things like leadership development, stewardship, stress management, systems thinking, some of the stuff that we're teaching on MBAs. It's in here. So I want you to use this information. So what are we saying? Are you living in man's economy or are you in God's economy? There's a big difference. If you are attending classes at universities and business schools, I know where they're coming from. They are full of man's economy. But even in the workplace, they are sitting to the towards the left. You can make that difference. Because the questions that I'm asking you to see if you're in man's economy and God's economy is all about who's the master of your life. Is it God or is it money? Easy. Things like uh, what is the object? object of affection? Is it God or is it money? Why do we have income? It's a very good question. Nothing wrong with the income, but you can decide from a God's economy, man's economy. Uh, what is the reason for wealth? Uh, what is the purpose of money? And please, you know, once we do and understand these type of things, I know you're going to start thinking differently. Things like the goals in life, what is the purpose of goals? Is it to follow God's will or is it just to benefit myself? Things like your definition of success. You need to be successful, but it's about faithfulness versus just achievement, achievement, achievement. So please, if you think about uh, um, things like significance, what drives you, it's all about you can clearly see where people are coming from. And today I want to say again to you, please join me. I'm excited about this journey and I want to train you, I want to teach you and I'm going to say it's simple. When I use things like business God's way, when I'm teaching people, when I'm saying now you need to go to the next level, you can do it because this is a very important topic. We need to understand this. Uh, we are often, we are not sure how to do it. And the way we do it, once we discuss these type of things, we're sitting down with people, we talk to them and we train them, we equip them, we explain to these people these type of things. Now what we're doing, and I want to be very practical, I want to repeat this. We put all this stuff together in typical manuals. We put all the videos together. We put all the slides together. And then the next step is, listen, you write me an email and say, Mario, I want to get involved. And my feedback is yes, because I want you to influence the world. See how you can use your testimony to influence people in the workplace. You can do it. I'm looking forward to assist you in this wonderful process. What a wonderful discussion about God's economy and man's economy. Now, again, from my side, I want to ask you, please, I don't want to hear words like, Amari, oh, this was a great discussion. I'm saying I based all my discussions on the Word of God and using material like Business God's Way. But now it's about action. So what I'm asking you always, I've got about two or three things that I'm asking you. What? The first thing is, what did you hear so far? What was stirring in your heart? What is the Holy Spirit touching and saying to you? And, and that's the first one. The second one is, what do you think? Do you agree with me? And this is where I want you to start writing, connect with us on the email, drop me a note, get involved. The third one is all about, so what are you going to do with this information? 
And for me, it's always the point of but information without application, it's not transformation. So what are we saying? Take this stuff further, get involved. Um, and to me is something that I know we can do something about it because this is such an important topic. We're living in a world, we're spending 60, 70% of the time um, in the workplace and we are not implementing the things that we've discussed today. But as we closing the session, um, I thought very hard how to close it. And in this session, I, I know there are people are listening. Are people saying, Mario, I need some prayer. I'm sitting in the world today. I don't experience this. I don't have joy. There's no, you know, people are not faithful, you know. And again, I want to say, please, Keep in mind the principles that we've discussed, but I've got a word of encouragement for you now that you've listened to me and listened to this. God has called you to be productive where you are. You are the salt of the earth and to cause you to be a blessing and that you must know the Lord is on your side because often we can lose, you know, like we don't want to carry on. And so my word of encouragement to you is God has given you a purpose. Well, a great, you know, a life of significance. Remember that God has kept you for a time like this, for this great moment. Um, the Holy Spirit living inside you will stir you on. So I'm saying, please look at your daily habits. Look at your God purpose. Look at where you are and celebrate His goodness um, today. And to keep on writing for us so that we can pray for you. And I know God will make the difference. God will help you. God will assist you uh, if you are serious about God's economy. Again, from my side, we, this is not the only, you know, discussion on this topic. In our next program coming up on this journey defined, we're going to look at things like ownership and purpose. So that's why I want to encourage you, keep on watching the next session. Uh, we, you know, God willing, we want to just take it further into your workplaces. So this is very important. Tune in because I know you can make that difference by applying this information. Uh, so I want to say again one or two final blessings for you. Um, I want to bless you with wisdom and knowledge. I want to bless you whatever you do. Please, that the goodness and the mercy and the goodness are going to follow you. Uh, I want to bless you with specifically where you are. Pray for your boss. Pray for your people around you so that you can apply these God's economy principles. It is possible. I know it. I'm excited. And I'm saying we're living in a world that you can make the difference. So I want to start closing this session because I'm saying it's so important. Uh, may God bless you. And I want to say goodbye to you. But in the meantime, keep on making contact. Use these principles so that we can assist you so that you can make the difference. So I want to close by saying be blessed but also stay blessed and keep on making a difference. May the rest of your life be the best part of your life.